Hi everybody, I'm Paul B.J. Ransbury and I'm the president of APS Emergency Maneuver Training. What I'd like to talk to you about on this video is the research that we've been doing over the past few months on the ability of pilots of all skill levels to be able to recover from in-flight upset situations. Uh, beside this video, you'll notice an image which is going to be a slide which has some bullet points that I'm going to talk to. It looks just like this one. And the title of that image is called Making the Difference. And on there, there's some statistics uh, and also there's some bullet points. So let's talk first about our research. <clears throat> what we did starting in November of 2007 is we started tracking the capabilities of pilots coming to APS and their ability to be able to recover from upset situations. Uh, the motivation behind this was simply the fact that it was clear to us over 10 years of doing this that pilots inherently are unable or don't seem to have the skills to be able to recover from extreme flight conditions in pitch, bank, and or angle of attack. And what we wanted to do is get a benchmark to see how people were doing at very various certification levels. For this particular discussion, we're going to focus more on professional jet pilots. And uh, we studied 115 pilots. We didn't discriminate. Everybody coming through our door was evaluated. Uh, and then the data we have here is we filtered it for the jet pilots. So of those 115, there were 75 that fall into the category of, of corporate commercial jet pilot uh, uh, professional aviators. <clears throat> so. Uh, what we did is the way the research worked when people arrived, they filled out a survey that uh define the demographic of age, type of airplane that they're flying, experience, aerobatic experience, and different parameters. Uh, what we did is in the first flight, before they had received any formal flight training, they had a chance to warm up on the airplane, get a feel for it, and how it handled. Uh, what we did is we subjected them to a variety of upset situations to see how they would respond without any training in dealing with these situations. And the ones that we uh, expose them to are, are listed on the uh, on the sheet or the image uh, beside this video, and they are nose low overbank, wake turbulence encounter, cross control stall to an overbank, nose high unusual attitude, and control fa failure. And specifically, this was a control failure with rudder hard over. Now, the important difference in what we're doing and what pilots would typically see in their certification is that we're not limiting this to, for example, of less than 30 degrees of pitch or 60 degrees of bank. In fact, the F. FAA designs, it defines an airplane upset with as little as 45 degrees of bank, 30 degrees correction, 25 degrees nose up, 10 degrees nose down, or within that regime with uh, at an airspeed that's inappropriate for the flight condition. So pilots are very capable of recovering within that envelope. In fact, beyond that envelope, up to about 30 degrees of pitch and 60 degrees of bank, by the way they're trained and the simulator training that they get, they're very capable of dealing with most any situation as long as it's less than those parameters of 30 degrees of pitch, 60 degrees of bank, and typically in an unstalled flight condition. What we wanted to see is how do people deal with situations beyond those parameters? Do the skills that they have, do they translate into an all-attitude environment? And what we saw, as you can see from our research, that clearly they do not. And if we'd, uh, and we'd like to uh, really put this in perspective, we're not here to beat up at all on pilot certification and pilot skill. What it comes down to is it's not the pilot's fault, it's, it's the way they were trained. And what we teach at APS Emergency Maneuver Training is all attitude recovery. So we deal with any flight condition, pitch, bank, or angle of attack. So it's an all attitude, all envelope program and dealing with recognition, avoidance, and recovery from, from virtually any upset situation. So the results we see from these professional aviators, these jet pilots, is before training with the scenarios we just threw at them, they were able to effectively recover in about 41% of the situations. After just three days and five flights of training, they could consistently and effectively recover 97% of the time when these same scenarios, in fact, we, we train them to much more scenarios than the ones that are listed, but very, very consistent capability. And I think the exciting part is it only took a few days to do this. And also, at that same during that same period that we're evaluating initial and final skill, we also had a total of 35 pilots that came through our program again for recurrent training. And we recorded their statistics, and we saw that over 75%, in fact, 76% of professional pilots or jet pilots coming to our program 19 months later retained that skill, 76% skill capability, which is still, again, close to double what they originally had uh, when they first came through. So very, very exciting. And of course, which motivates us to recommend people to come in and do a recurrent training about every year to a year and a half, just to keep that capability level high to ensure they're, they have the skill, awareness, and knowledge to deal with any upset that they can come across. So 
What this comes down to is, well, how do we do that at APS Emergency Maneuver Training? Well, it's, it took some time, and we've been doing this for over 10 years. This is our 13th season doing upset recovery training full time, and it's taken a while to put together a good combination of assets, training program, instructional techniques to be able to deliver this skill to people very quickly. And I just made a few bullet points of what we found uh, those to be. Proven and current, uh, it's definitely proven, as you can tell by our statistics. Uh, people who come through the program, in fact, below this video, you can see feedback a little bit lower on the page of what people thought of the program and how effective it was. And we keep current, we're always updating, and we're making sure we have the newest technology available to people to ensure that they can deal with uh, any situation they're faced with. And also, as I kind of alluded to already, we actually train people to deal with reality, not certification or simulator limitations. Now, again, that's not a hit on the training marketplace. The training marketplace trains to a requirement that is established by the FAA and typically in your original certification, again, not more than about 30 degrees of pitch, 60 degrees of bank. And in fact, in the simulators, uh, and good on them, they're usually going beyond the definition of the FAA uh, upset, which is 45 degrees of bank, 25 degrees of pitch, or 10 degrees nose down pitch. And But the, again, there in the, the high fidelity envelope of the simulator, really, once you start getting beyond about 60 degrees of bank, 30 degrees of pitch, the, the high fidelity envelope that that simulator's program to starts dropping off. In other words, it's it's starting to guess at what the real airplane would do. So when we start getting into extreme flight conditions, there's limitations both in our original certification and also the recurrent training that we get. Very pertinent academic training, right to the point, eight and a half to 10 hours of training, credible. All of our instructors are formal course military instructor pilots. We're also all fighter pilots, uh, airline transport category pilots with commercial experience. Uh, so when we teach techniques to people of all fixed wing airplanes, we have the credibility to do that. Very simple, effective recovery techniques. The last thing you want is a 15-step process in an emergency that's different for every situation. We have a five-step recovery process that works in a wide variety in most upset situations to recover the airplane effectively and efficiently to save lives. Recall technology, that's important. As everybody knows, when we get into an emergency situation, there's a tendency to get stressed, overwhelmed. Our ability to analyze and take action drops off rapidly. So you want a very simple, effective technique that you can recall that you have the ability to force a mental action to recall that physical response to recover the airplane and dramatic events there's a lot of providers out there that don't allow the situations to get dramatic in other words if somebody makes a mistake in our program we let them see the results now of course nothing unsafe is ever allowed to develop but we certainly let them see the consequences of not doing the proper recovery and that's something that people just don't forget they realize when they prove it to themselves firsthand that the recovery techniques that we're teaching are simple, they're effective, and if they have the mental discipline to apply them, they're going to be able to recover the airplane, and that's so very important. The last point, repetition to proficiency. This is so crucial. You just can't get these skills in a matter of one or two flights, and we've seen that. In fact, the minimum program that we will guarantee results is two days and a full three flights of training. Our best program that gives the highest results and the best retention is a full three days and five hours of flight training, and that's five separate flights. Really important to break those apart. You can't just go up for five hours in one flight and develop these skills. You need to go up there a couple flights a day, the first day we do one flight, the next day is after we do two flights. Repetition of proficiency, see these situations in a scenario-based profile so you can recognize a void and if necessary, recover from virtually any upset situation you can be faced with in an airplane. We recommend people come back on an annual basis, uh, no later than two years to get these skills upgraded. So what we teach is safe, it's effective, and it works and you can use it in your airplane to save your life, save the aircraft, and save the lives of the people on board with you. We look forward to seeing you in Arizona. Thank you.